I'm Ruth. And I'm Brenton. Welcome to Spectrum Today. We always look forward to a time to be able to share with you. Hope you had a great weekend. How was your weekend? I had a great weekend. Yes. Toward the end Very of nice. the month of June. Can you believe it? Mm -hmm. Next weekend is almost the 4th of July-ish holiday kickoff e-time. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe not officially. It's kind, of, it's kind of weird this year because 4th of July falls kind of in the middle of the week. So. Yeah. How was your weekend? I know you're usually tired on Sunday after services. I was. And people have been out of town a lot on vacation, and yes. so you feel you feel that in service um, when you're there. You're like, how's everybody? Really yeah. People. They're on vacation. Of, I want to be on vacation. A lot yeah. of new friends with us yes. in services. Very nice. But we have had a lot of people traveling, mm -hmm. so yeah, no, it's, it's part of it's it's okay. We've got a lot of new things coming up this weekend. We have a prayer and praise night, which I'm excited about. And then we also have Sunday, our right? block party next right. Sunday at church. So that's going to be wonderful. An we'll outreach to the that. community. So yeah. if you live around Montgomery and Jefferson, come on by. You'll see it's going to be, we have so many things planned Outboard, outside in the uh, in that parking lot area. Climbing. So if you're, on, if you're nearby, there's apartment complexes right here by Jefferson and Montgomery. Yes. Come on over. And it's really just an outreach so we can get to know you and you can get to know us. One service at 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. this Sunday. So I look forward to that. Okay. A lot right. of good stuff in the news, but let's okay. let's jump into it. Uh, go with a harder hitting one than an okay. easier one. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, her comments comparing the detention centers on the southern border with uh, the uh, Holocaust camps of World War II has met with blowback from Holocaust survivors. From two Holocaust survivors. Um, who, and also, I believe it was... Um, I think the mayor, it, yeah. uh, Bill de Blasio, yeah. also said that was a bad... Yeah, he said they were you know, she was wrong for comparing mm -hmm. them that way. I, I did, you know, I mean, when you think about what happened in World War II, one of the great low points of history, and then you try to compare that to the detention facilities as people are coming across the southern border, they're just not even comparable. Right. Just a bad, bad choice. And two of the survivors, one of them said, it, the United States is the great, greatest country to live in, as he was remembered when they um, declared that they were free, and he remembers looking up into the sky because every morning he would pray and say, God, thank you for another day. Thank you that I can see the light of day. And when they did uh, let them, told him that they were free, he said, where do I go? He looked at, up at the sky again, asked God, where do I go? And he came to America and he said, this is still the greatest country. There's no other country like That's it. And encouraging. what is happening here is nothing to be compared to what happened yeah. in the, um, the camps. Well, you know, I think it really speaks of, of, of a lack of knowledge of history, you know, and, and, and a lot of hyperbole. Uh, people really using a lot of extreme comparisons that really should not be used. Well, All right. and a lot of it was because they said it's political. She's political, so she wants to, to turn what she's saying into into something like that. So it's what, what the survivors had said too. Yeah. Why she said it, I don't know, but that's why she said it. One of the reasons she said it. Well, on a happier note, mm -hmm. it, we oh, are yes. in the midst of summer movie blockbuster season, yet this <laughs> year has not been so great for the movie guys. They have not had the run they thought they were going to have. You remember the, uh, was it Dark Phoenix Rising, which was one of those stories of, I don't know, superheroes. That kind of flopped. Endgame did it not. Did. I think Endgame did yeah. really well, But didn't I don't it? think that was in the summer, technically. Oh, okay. Well, Toy Story uh, opened four. big. Oh, Toy, Toy Story 4. four. What did I say? You just said Toy Story. Okay, to Toy, oh my goodness. I had coffee this morning, too. Toy Story 4. And we did see it. No, we did. It left me feeling... Kind of funny. I mean, funny. it was good, <laughs> but I'm just like. A little sad? Yeah. <laughs> the oh, end I, of think, it. I think there'll be a Toy Story 5 someday. <laughs> come on. How long can you do that? How do you think they can do As long as you can make, here Man. it comes, 118 million on the opening weekend. Which you can keep producing movies. <laughs> and that was below expectation. <laughs> yes, can you believe that? 118 million below expectation. Well, they. Uh, it also, though, you know, so before you feel too bad for them, it also grossed 120 million. Uh, internationally, yes. So 118 million domestically, 120 million domestic or internationally. Crazy. That's a lot of money. Third biggest animated open ever. Um, yes. I think it was behind. Let me see. I, be, I believe it was the first one. I think was last year's Incredibles two and and Dory, or Finding Dory. Yes. I think those were the other two that were bigger, uh, if, if memory serves me. But nonetheless, I. They say that they do not really have any family-friendly competition, <laughs> uh, I think, until 
the Lion King movie comes out uh, oh. later in the summer, which is like July 25th. I don't know about that so one got, either, because that's like movie, movie. It, they like changed it. Yeah. What do you think about that? I think Toy Story's going to, I think they're going to own it. That's what I think. I think Toy Story will own it that. for the summer and be one of the biggest blockbusters of all time. Okay, we had some... We, we weren't alone at the movies, and, and a comment that was made was like, uh, all those voices sound old now, like Toy Story. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> and I'm like, I never would have thought of that, but they're like, all oh, the voices. older toy than he used to be. <laughs> so, you know. They're the vintage. Toys and voices are aging as well. They're vintage, I guess, they but are. I never would have thought of that. And they're like, the voices are getting older. Well, you know, I think Toy Story came out, the first one came out when our son was like born. You know, that's true. Because that's like. Over 20 years yes. ago. Yes. Can you believe that? Yeah, no. But, yeah, yes so and we no. don't want to ruin anything time. for you. So if good. you're planning I... to go see it, go see it. But it did leave me kind of feeling funny. All right. Well, I thought it was a good movie. <laughs> it was, was good. It was well written. Mm -hmm. And even if and an adult funny. kept your attention, I'd go back and see it. I laughed more than I thought I would laugh. Yeah. I did. I did find myself laughing. There were some laugh I thought out I loud would. moments. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the folks at NASA say that NASA rover has detected, is it methane mm -hmm. gas on, uh, on Mars, leading them to believe that possibly there could be, be life there. Right. Don't know. I don't know either. I, I mean, they're, it's a gas. It's amazing. I mean, who knows? Who knows? I don't know. But inquiring <laughs> minds want to know. Anyway, <laughs> who knows? That's funny, Vincent. Not even the, not even the guys oh, at NASA know. Goodness. They're guessing. They're hoping. They're thinking maybe. Okay. Well, let's move on maybe to something. Maybe because it's changing. Because when they first got there, was nothing. The, the photos were nothing there. <laughs> and so it's changing. And so Wait, that's okay. why. My mind goes back to this commercial. I, saw. I was telling what? us about this in the, before we came on. You were telling that, us? Yeah. We were, there's this, this, this commercial of like the, the Mars rover. And, you know, and it gets its last transmission climbing up a hill. And it says, this is the last transmission. And it dies. And, you know, people in NASA control or NASA control are saying, well, there's no life there. And then they pan up and right over the horizon, there's this entire Martian city with flying, you know, oh, wow. uh, saucers yeah. and all sorts of creatures. Okay, whatever. I thought that was funny. All right. I think that's how we are with knowing what's going on on Mars. All right, here's, here's another one. <laughs> okay. uh, this has to do with, uh, with Bernie Sanders. You know, we have our first debate this week, I believe. Oh, wow. I was not yes. ready for that. Already. So, we're over a year and a half away, like, or good something like grief. that. It'd I think it's a, a little early, time. whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Bernie Sanders is proposing canceling an entire 1.6 trillion. Ooh, now, hold on to your nice. hats, friends. <laughs> 1.6 trillion dollars in student loan debt. I, I just question, uh, number one, where are we going to get 1.6 trillion dollars? We're already so far in debt as a nation, as a debtor nation. But hey, why not? Another 1.6 trillion. This is amongst many wow. other things that they want to, uh, they're proposing, including uh, Medicare for all and uh, a huge uh, rebuilding package of uh, infrastructure. It's part of a package that would also make public universities, community colleges, and trade schools tuition free. Hey, it sounds great. I just don't believe we can yeah. pay for it. Did you know that 45 million Americans have student loan debt? That's a lot. Well, it, it is a lot, but then you, you compare that to the number of Americans that there are, and what is that, about 15% of Americans? 15, not 20%. Yeah. I think it's about 15% of Americans. Now, I'm not saying it's not, it's not a problem, but right. here's the deal. So what at, he's saying is he wants to tax Wall Street yeah. uh, that, with a campaign that will raise over $2 trillion O over the course of 10 years, the yeah. next 10 years. They also say that that's probably, some say that's probably a high estimate that it would create that much money. The problem, though, with that is it's basically a redistribution of wealth. Mm -hmm. Take it from some yeah. people who have some money and give it right. to some people who don't have some money. The critics say the problem with that is you're really giving it to people who already have the capacity with the college degree to earn more money than oh. the people who don't have a college degree. I so is that even fair? Mm, gotcha. Mm. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm sure it's going to be interesting to watch as things unfold yeah. in the debates. Mm -hmm. I, you're right. It will be interesting. 
All right, well, a lot of good things coming up. Don't forget to, oh, I want to make sure to mention to you, rescan your TV sets. If you uh, get television over the air, don't forget that many of the channels have been caught up in the digital repack, and it's time to retune your TV sets. So do that so you make sure you get all of your channels that are available to you. We'll be back next. Well, we really want to refocus your attention one more time on this digital repack that has uh, been underway here in the Albuquerque area, and it's, it's engaged nationwide, but it comes in phases in different parts of the country and so on and so forth. Um, that means that TV channels that are available to you over the air as a free over the air service, you can get them with your antenna if that's how you get your TV, you need to rescan your set okay. because a lot of the channels have moved around several of them and uh, the only way that you're going to be able to get all of the channels is to rescan your set so I'd encourage you to do so one of our channels here at Alpha Omega Broadcasting was engaged in that repack mm -hmm. not KZQ but one of our, our other stations and so it's important to re, uh, rescan mm -hmm. it's easy all you do is you go back through and just rescan if you if you are receiving your television with an off-air antenna you probably do that fairly frequently anyway because a lot of times there's new programming being offered to you so we would encourage you to do but so. But if your channel is kind of like I am, I'm like calling you into the other room or you can call the station and we can kind of help guide you through that as well. Yep. We'd encourage you to visit us online at kazq32.org for those of you who support us monthly and those who are saying, hey, I'd like to be involved in supporting Alpha Omega Broadcasting, you can do that online. We have different levels of involvement. We have our fam family safe haven foundation team member, which is uh, goes towards family programming. We provide clean, safe family programming for you, and that's what that goes towards. We also have president partner levels, which is with your gift of 50, 75, or $100. You can mail in your check, money order, to 4501 Montgomery Boulevard Northeast, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87109, or simply call into the station to speak to someone at 505-884-8355, extension 101. However you are able to give, remember those donations are tax deductible and we certainly are dependent on your help and of course this digital repack that we're engaged in is expensive and so your help is so appreciated. Thank you for all you do. So excited to have with us today Sarah Moran. Sarah is the Extension Horticulture Agent for New Mexico State University's Cooperative Extension Services. That's quite a title. Wow. You got that. <laughs> That's hot. I hope you don't have to put that on your business card because that is a big long title. Yeah. But we are she glad does. to have you with us today. Mm -hmm. We would look forward today to learning from you because you work in the area of horticulture. But tell us what that means and tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me sure. this morning. Pleasure. And a little bit about myself. Well, I'm originally from El Salvador and I moved to the U.S. in 2006. I graduated with a master's uh, in horticulture from NMSU. Very nice. And in 2017, I just moved to Albuquerque and started this position as the horticulture um, agent. So what I do pretty much is to deal with people that has vegetable gardens, but mm -hmm. also some ornamental, such as shrubs and trees, and also turf grass. So any okay. issue, concern you have, um, I will try my best to help you. Yeah. How did you get involved, or what, what was the thing that connected you to it, that interested you in, in horticulture? Well, when I was in California, I used to work at a nursery, so I, <laughs> okay. you can kind of see that interest yes. of people, you know, yeah. having uh, with plants. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, when I was in Honduras, which is where I got my bachelor's, mm -hmm. uh, I was able to connect people and create these uh, gardens that involve 
all the community. And you will be able to see uh, how those communities build up socially uh -huh. and you know around the garden. Yeah. So it, it's, there is this connection and then there are also some studies that show that people that live around green areas, they tend to perform uh, better, especially with kids oh, as well. Wow. So it's kind of nice, you know, yeah. to, to be able to help in this field and knowing that you can help your community through That's the right. horticulture That's field as well. That's very cool. Yeah? And I think, you know, I think of um, where you're from or California and the climate is so much different than it is here in New Mexico. Yes. And so to me, it would seem like it would be so much harder to grow things here. Yeah. But it's, it's possible, yeah. and that's that's the good part. Yeah, don't you know? give up. I, I think in either way, uh, there is always a learning curve, uh -huh. and that's kind of what makes it exciting. So you are kind of being a scientist as well, you know, just experimenting what works and what doesn't work in your area. Yeah, Very neat. But, yeah. But we can still grow stuff, and that's, yeah. that's good. Well, and we <laughs> do grow a lot. It's the, it, it mm -hmm. really is, uh, each climate seems to perform with certain crops better, mm -hmm, doesn't mm -hmm. it? And that's probably something that yeah. you can teach us a little bit about. But do you have programs where you get people who are volunteering, connected with with projects that you're involved with? Or how do people tie into to what you do as an extension agent? Yes, I oversee a couple of programs. Um, mm -hmm. One is Master Composters, and the okay. other one is the Albuquerque Area Extension Master Gardeners. Um, they are uh, new interns that we call interns that we train is each year okay. in different topics. If it's they're gonna want to be um, composters, we train yeah. them in different uh, composting topics, and because uh, it's very different to compost here in the desert than in areas yes. where you know you see Much more, more humid. Yes, yes, exactly. So uh, we train them, and we also train uh, for master gardeners in every uh, horticulture topic related, such as weed, integrated pest management, soil scientists, climate, uh, soil science, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. climate and, and water, and all that. So we train them, and they are able to outreach that community. They uh, provide classes, they try to educate people in all these different areas. Wow. Tell me about composting. That's interesting to me because I, I, I have seen people, uh, I've only seen people like on TV do it. And I'm like, that's interesting. How would you even start to do that? Well, you start, it's, you have to find a way of composting that fit your uh what you want to do. Okay. There is some people that they don't want to get involved as much as labor intensive. They don't want that. Okay. Um, so there is a way for you to do that. Like you can collect all your food scraps yes. primarily uh -huh. and then just, you know, dig a little hole in your, in your uh, garden and just put all that there and then just cover. Eventually it's going to decompose and you're kind of building on your soil health. Very cool. But they offer different workshops through the uh, year mm -hmm. in different topics such as Kashi or worm composting or composting okay. for home basics so you will have to make a decision mm -hmm. whatever best what you like to yeah. do yes wow. how can people like get involved or find out information um, if you would like to do the master composters, you can go to our website, that's bernaliextension.nmsu.edu, mm -hmm. and you will click uh, where it says master composters, and from there it's going to take you to that uh, screen, and you will see, uh, you know, the dates of the application, because for right now we are preparing for next year. Okay. And if you would like to be a master gardener, then you will go to abqmastergardeners.org. Very and cool. you will be able to see the future dates so you can apply for wow. the training next year. That's so cool. tell us a little bit about upcoming events that you have as, as a part of the, the extension, Cooperative Extension Services. Do you have events later this year? I mean, you mentioned to us prior that there's a big tomato festival. Yes, we're, we're having a tomato fiesta. Master Gardeners have been doing this for quite a while. And that's going to be on August 25th. It's a familiar event. It's going to be open to the public at the uh, Albuquerque Garden Center. Okay. And we will have activities for the kids. We have a tomato tasting as well. And um, I also mentioned that we have probably mo one of the most famous BLT because it's sold out pretty, pretty quick. Wow. So, yeah. And we also have workshops. I think this year we're going to talk about pest, dise pest uh, diseases. Okay. So you can come and ask, you know, any question you might have related to your plant, specifically tomatoes. But yeah. Yeah, any concern or issue, you can come and we'll try our best to help you. Sarah, is, are the tomatoes the most popular 
vegetable for people to, to grow. Yes, it is. <laughs> At least in the Albuquerque area, yeah. about this time, I will start to see quite a lot of questions, uh, tomato-related questions especially. Yeah. See, when I think of tomatoes in New Mexico, I think of salsa. Mm -hmm. People, yeah, yeah, that's which one is the best for the salsa that you make? And that's what I think about. Yeah. If there's a difference, I don't know. Well, we grow different varieties. Um, most of the varieties that I know, they are come from max, master gardener mm -hmm. experiences with you know several varieties. So <laughs> I think it depends on your taste and yeah. what you want. Maybe you want a tomato that is a little more acidic than yeah. a sweet one. So and if you like colors, you know there right. is also different colors as well. You right. know the other thing that I see a lot is people are talking about growing peppers here. I guess everybody thinks that they can you know be the next person to <laughs> to tie into the uh, mm -hmm. the chili heritage of New Mexico. So that's another one that I, I see in our area. Often. Yeah, yeah. Very yeah. And I remember one time I saw this like a salsa garden and what you have planted was a pepper and tomatoes and onions and cilantro. <laughs> everything that goes so there. every time you harvest, you will make oh, your salsa. You yeah, oh, there so you that's go. kind of cool. That is a, that is a good idea. Hey, good you idea find that people you. utilize uh, containers in the city areas more or do you find that they have regular in-ground gardens, or do you see a mixture? Does it depend? I believe, yeah, it depends, it depends on, on your uh, preference. Like if you're living in a small area, maybe an apartment, uh, then a container garden will fit your uh, what you do better. Okay. Um, or if you have, maybe you have a big area, but you have some problems with your soil, maybe it's too compacted, uh -huh. or you yes. don't want to grow in a big area, uh, then container garden will be the, your option. But there is people that do both. You know, they plant in your uh, garden, mm -hmm. but they also have a some uh, plants in their containers as well. And also depends of, of what you have. Uh, okay. If you have plants that doesn't tolerate well the uh, cold weather that we have, yes. then container, with container garden, you can bring them inside your house and protect oh. it through the winter. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. That we smart. thought about that. How about trees? What yeah. kind of trees work well in, in New Mexico in terms of fruit trees? Uh, fruit trees, well, peach is probably one of the most popular. Wow. Um, a peach, uh, cherry trees, plums, uh, pears. Uh, it all depends on the care that you gave to the to that tree. To the tree. Are yes. certain trees easier to care for? Um, I will say that there is no zero maintenance plant in uh -huh. general. So you know, whatever plant you would like to grow, you have to keep an eye on how it do is doing. That okay. it's uh, especially receiving the proper amount amount of water, which yes. is kind of tough in this environment, but uh, it's pretty much what plants uh, would like to have. Yeah. You know? They thrive on <laughs> yes. a lot of um, really interesting, yeah. Yeah, That, that is interesting. You gotta, you gotta stay after it. You can't yes. ease up. So if they have right. questions, somebody's watching today and they say, man, I'd really have a question for Sarah or somebody that works with you. How can they get in touch with you? Is the web the best way or, or a phone number? Uh, you can, yeah, phone number, it's fine. Um, it's uh, 243-1386. You can call our office. You can ask me, leave me a message, and I will try my best to reply to you as soon as I can. Yeah. And yeah, and you can also go to our website and send a question there. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Our guest today is Sarah Moran, and she is with the Extension uh, Horticultural Agent for New Mexico State University's Cooperative Extension Services mm -hmm. and a great resource for each of us who might be working on plants and things in your garden or around your home. Thanks for being with us, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me again. Today we're going to look at a passage in Genesis 34 and 35. Uh, we're going to read mostly in chapter 35, but let me set up the, the account. Chapter 34 of Genesis is not a passage we read a lot. Uh, at least I haven't heard too many messages on it. The, the people of uh, Israel, specifically Jacob's family, have, are now living near a town named uh, Shechem. And uh, one of Jacob's, well, his only daughter, Dinah, is raped in the town. Right. <clears throat> and long story short... Um, two of her brothers, Levi and Simeon, 
um, deceive the people of that town, and they go in and they murder most everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, that it, well, all the men, and they take, and then all the brothers show up, and they take the women and children, and they plunder the town, and take them captive. And it ends uh, in the last portion. There it says, "Afterward, Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, you have ruined me. Mm -hmm. You've made me stink among all the people of this land, among all the Canaanites and Perizzites. We are so few that they will join forces and crush us. I'll be ruined, and my entire house will be wiped out." And then listen to this last verse. But why should we? let them treat our sister like a prostitute, they retorted angrily. So mm -hmm. what, what you see is there's a lot of family conflict and there really is nothing good going on because mm -hmm. there's been something very evil done. Right. They respond in anger. Mm -hmm. How do you respond to a situation that just seems to have no good answers? Or go, unfair. Mm -hmm. Go to chapter 35 and let's start off with verse number one. Okay, then God said to Jacob, get ready and move to Bethel and settle there, built an, al built an altar to the Lord to the God who appeared to you when you fled your brother Esau. So the first thing we can see is that God speaks to him to return to a place of renewed commitment to him mm -hmm. and, and renewed seeking after him. Okay. Go down a little bit further into verse number five and see what the, what the Lord does next. Okay. As they set out, the ter a terror from God spread over the people in all the towns of that area. Mm -hmm. So no one attacked Jacob's family. Interesting, isn't it? God has a way of protecting us, yes, even does. though it was a real concern what Jacob said. We're going to die because these, all the other people around us are going to attack us mm -hmm. because of what you've done in this outburst of anger. Now go further down. Let's read verses 11 through 13, and we'll end there today. Then God said, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. You will become a great nation, even many nations. Kings will be among your descendants, and I will give you the land I once gave to Abram and Isaac. Yes, I will give it to you and your descendants after you. Then God went up from that place where he had spoken to Jacob. So Jacob arrives at Bethel, and as he is worshiping God, God appears to him and affirms to him about his future. And here's the key that I want to share with you. Sometimes we go through life and situations are unfair. And sometimes things happen and we can't understand why or explain why. But God does often protect us. Mm -hmm. And then he speaks to us about our future when we return to him, seeking him for the answers. If you're going through a dark place, return to the Lord and God can show you exactly what you need to do. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you next time.